We live in a time where the United States faces as many or more complicated challenges than we have ever faced at any point in our history. So that means we have to be ready for a wide array of threats and have to be agile enough to respond to the unexpected. Uh, we've got to deal with Russia, China, Iran, North Korea, terrorism, cyber, outer space, uh, diseases, all at the same time. And so agility is a key attribute that is necessary for today, but becoming harder and harder as the bureaucracy in the military and elsewhere grows. Well, the Constitution puts specific responsibilities on Congress's shoulders to help defend the country. Besides which, I think defending the country is the first job of the federal government, and therefore it's the first job of Congress. It's a thing we have to make sure we do at the top of the priority list. The NDAA stands for the National Defense Authorization Act, and it is the legislation that has passed Congress and been signed into law by the President every year for 53 straight years. It includes the full gamut of legislation and authorization for our military forces in the year ahead. So what we're trying to do with this NDAA is to improve agility, help us be able to be more responsive. I think the key advantage the United States has far above and beyond any other nation's military are the people who serve, their common sense, their character, their judgment. We listen to them about what they're facing, about how the system is not working as effectively as it should to support them, uh, and about suggestions they have for improvement. We've got to be more agile in order to meet the threats, and this NDAA takes some steps into helping us be more agile and also to get better value for the taxpayer dollars. It's always tempting to, to say, uh, we spend so much money on defense, there's always a place we can cut. And the truth is, there can always be cuts. But you have to think about the consequences of those cuts. And in the case of defense, those consequences are often life and death. But to just have blind sort of cuts for the sake of cuts, I think when that has happened in the past, we've come to regret it. Most of this is, is a very nonpartisan sort of process, and I think that's what the American people expect from Congress when it comes to their national security.